Now, to the only woman to declare her intention to run for Speaker of the House of Representatives, Miriam Onua, her representing Okigwe North Federal constituency of Emo State, a female in a sea of abadas and suits, sticking out in contrast to the male contestants that dominate the race promising to bring a different perspective to the job and a woman's voice to the table. She certainly seems to have the right qualification. She's a master's degree holder and a ranking member of the House who'd been re-elected for a second term. And when she announced she was joining the speakership race, she appealed to the president-elect, Bola Tiribu, to support her in her quest and to show by his action his intention to bridge the yawning gender gap. But that appeal has apparently not been heeded, and her party, the APC, has chosen a zoning template that favours the Northwest candidate, Abbas Tajuddin, for Speaker, and Ben Kalu from the Southeast for Deputy Speaker. But she's pressing ahead with her bid regardless, and has decided to appeal directly to her fellow members of the House. So can she defy the APC and the gender challenge and rise to the top job. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Princess Miriam Onua, a member of the House of Representatives who aspires to be the Speaker of the 10th National Assembly. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are you discouraged by the fact that the preferred candidate for the Speakership in the APC has been given to the men and not to you? I am discouraged. I would say I least expected that um, the party would uh, uh, treat the quality and content and caliber of men and myself who were in the contest to this race. I, I see this as a clear definition or demonstration of a woman making a delicious meal, and yet she is deliberately shut out uh, from being a partaker of the same meal she has made. I led my party to an election where I came out victorious. By all ramification, I qualify. I am ranking. I am APC. In fact, I am largely acclaimed to be the Bogboni Shep. And at this stage of our nation's history, where we are still grappling with the dust, and fallout of the general election. We cannot see the party going into this kind of zoning to a, an area without due consultation and zoning to persons. I've not seen this gentleman even walk up to me to say, hello, Miriam, I'm running to be this. But I have approached almost everyone in parliament and members elect. Politics and governance and leadership is a function of consultation, lobbying, and rubbing minds with people. And I want to believe that this is not the final uh, state of this, because even in the letter that is flying, and which is issued by my party, it is stated there in the paragraph that the party still deserves to go for further and better consultation with relevant stakeholders. I am a stakeholder. I wasn't even reached out to. I wasn't consulted. So where is the place for gender? Are we playing lip, lip game? Is it just an illusion? Is it imaginary that the party has a revised, revised national gender policy? And in it, it is enshrined that uh, uh, positions will be shared equitably, fairly, and justly. This is injustice. It infringes on my right as a party member on the, by the virtues, by the, the powers conferred on me by the Constitution. It's also discriminatory. I tell you, the party gave women a Greek gift when it said it has, a half, it, it has halved the prize for nomination. And you are aware that most women who run we are given the ticket at half the price just like the persons with disability, we are generally regarded as vulnerable groups. Then how do you explain that in an election which came with so much tornadoes and tsunami, this person considered to be a vulnerable group emerges through the storm, yet she's not allowed an opportunity to be at the table with the dwindling and declining margin and number of women representation. We are still struggling to get to 5%. 
and a woman has come with the merit, competencies, and the right capacity for the job. And now, something seems to be like playing another swan song and dancing to another tune. I want to, uh, to believe that uh, my party will not speak from both sides of the mouth. I am a beloved daughter of the party. And where there is a contest between children of the same party, like I always said, I come from a polygamous family where there is presumed to be so much rancor. I grew up through that structure and I know what it is to go through such system and maintain unity. And that's what we need now. Was it involved? Was it implied? Was it brought to the book, to the table? It was not done. And so I am in the race for the speakership. Right. So, so let's be clear that you are still running for the post in spite of the move by your party, the APC, to zone it to yes. the Northwest. Well, the party uh, belongs to me and I'm a party member. The party is us. Nigeria belongs to us. The party would not shut its windows or doors to me. I am a product and a clear uh, stakeholder and participant in the making and building of the party structure. No, let, let me just be so, clear, because you, you had said that you would settle for either speaker or deputy speaker. But the deputy speakership was zoned to your region, oh, yeah. to your zone, the southeast. So isn't that satisfactory or it had to be you and no one else? I'm not particularly just complaining because my name is clearly omitted in the paper. I am an advocate of good governance. Mm. And I feel that where you are aware that your children are vying for certain offices, bring us to the table. There ought to be some consultation as to decide in the first instance which is going where. That's what I'm saying. And if there is anything that the party thought was going to my zone, shouldn't I be given the right of first refusal? Don't I deserve to be there? Is the party saying that as a girl child or, is, or as a woman, you can be anything, you can be something or you can be anything but not what you really want to be. So the so, issue so you have um, is that you were not consulted. We were not consulted. Right. And this is not the usual manner the party that has traversed through the, 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 this uh, mm. stretch will uh, handle the, uh, this type of ma uh, matter. And I feel that um, something is wrong. It is either the, the group or the committee which uh, uh, submitted this information or the uh, made submission to the NWC uh, were misguided or misled. The party has a structure from the world to the local government to the state and the regional, and before you get to the National Working Committee, I belong to all of these strata mm. of the party, and at no time have I been called. And does this emphasize to you that the progress of women into elective office, I mean, you're clearly a great example, mm. um, but that the progress of women into elective office is slow and will continue to be so for some time? If so, how frustrating is that for someone like yourself who believes that achieving gender progress and even gender equality in the National Assembly is an important goal? Well, I, I am scared right now that it might take us a lot longer. Or it might be tougher, but I'm willing to go the hard because mm. if if I don't take care of our interest, who will? And that's why we were happy when the president-elect, our father, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, when he emerged as president, and even through, throughout the build-up to his election by the party, I actively participated because I saw this as a ray of hope. In fact, I dreamt of the renewed hope because I saw this as a glimpse of hope that finally, the dawn, the new dawn had come for the women. Mm. And I am strongly convinced that the nature of the man in question is inclusivity. Yeah, but this paper does not reflect yeah. well, the well, nature well, of the man we talk about who has empowered even his own wife to become senator. Well, what I was going to say is that when you announced that you were joining the speakership race, you appealed to him. 
Yes. Bola Tinubu to support you in your quest to be speaker. I remember reading about that. But going by the preferred candidates the APC has chosen, which we are told are reflective of what he wanted, he obviously either didn't hear your appeal or chose to ignore it. What do you have to say to him? Well, this is a passionate appeal to our father and the president-elect, Bala Ahmed Tinumbu. He is a listening father. I know he will, uh, listen to, uh, he will listen to all sides and come back to his nature. I know who he is. He doesn't easily fall to pressure. Yeah, but when you say come back to his nature, what do you mean? Are, are you saying that he should you have reverse said, this? You, of course, it's, it's not cast it in stone. You. The letter itself says that it's not finite. Right. This is a, so it's a process. It's advisory. Right. It's not cast in stone. And we are in a democracy where uh, uh, emotions are constantly evolving. Mm. Obviously, or, or, or presumably, he might be under a lot of pressure right now. But I think that with time, the right thing will be done. I will continue to be a loyal party woman, which I've always been. But you're but still going to... But within the confines yeah. that the provisions of the party constitution, mm. which also mainstreams gender, permits. And in that and regard... The, and, the, uh, constitu and the constitution of the Federal Republic. In America. that regard, you're going to defy the party's wishes and keep running. I'm going to explore the... Uh, 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 the openings. But mm. well, you said you're going to keep running. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's what it means. That the party itself, even in the letter, had said that it would deploy further and better consultation, meaning that further and better consultations had not been done. Mm. In an environment where you have divergent interest in office, there's, there's a need for inclusivity and diversity. But don't you need the support of your, the official support of your party going forward? Because if you run in defiance, if you like, of the party whip, I mean, isn't that going to come back to, to haunt you? Do you see yourself as having the capacity to generate enough support <laughs> within the Green Chamber without the official support of your party? Uncle Charles, I tell you, that millions of Nigerian women who form about 49.5% of our population, 44.4 million Nigerians are voters. I don't, I, don't want, I do not want to betray their trust. Mm. And I do not want to be looked in the face tomorrow and be told, Miriam, you failed women. I want to hold strongly on the words and assurances of Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinubu who was followed through the nooks and crannies of this country by women, credible, intelligent, mm. and capable women. We were weak, but we were able to kill a lion. And yet, the men could not kill the same lion. The same lion that I kill, another man is asked to butcher and, and eat. That is mm. unjust. I totally it's understand. not fair. I totally understand and, and, what and, you're and, saying. And, and I tell you that these things are not cast in stone. And with... With time and within, as the week, as the time unfolds, you will see that. Um, but do you feel you have support to go it, as you are in the national, in the green chamber? You know what happens during election of principal and presiding officers of the national assembly. It's not over. Would you settle for anything else other than speaker or deputy speaker? Well, I am running for the speakership of the House of Representatives. And you see, where we have problem is that those who are even shut out from this conviviality and uh, 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 discussions are people with credibility and capacity and loyalty to the party. So I, I do not think at this time we'll, I'll be talking about what to settle for and what not to settle for. I am capable to be the presiding officer as the speaker. So how does it look that we preach something and do another? Well, so I should be able to put my popularity to the test. I agree And when 100%. the time comes, I would be nominated yeah. and voting will ensue. And then I will see. If I fail, yeah. then I go honorably to the women. 
Yeah, that, that, that I makes win, a lot of then sense. Then it will mean that and, I have that's tried the, that's and the, I have um, pushed it through to the end. That's the but gallant thing to do. But I know that I have the war chest that it demands. I am not bigger than the party. Mm. I will remain loyal to the party. But when you have children and whom uh, uh, you owe it to, the love that they deserve, you do not exhibit anger mm. when you t deal with your children. Well, the, the reason I ask you, I mean, beyond your clear, um, your clarity of thought and, and ideas and, and, and very clear focus, which is very admirable, um, obviously you need the votes of the people in the House of Representatives. Members elect. Yeah, if you're going to become the speaker and achieve that ambition. But the Ninth National Assembly um, failed to pass constitutional amendments aimed at enhancing women's participation in politics. Does that tell you something about the mental disposition of the people who you're asking to vote for you? Well, I, like I said in my uh, earlier appearance here, politics and time and issues are constantly evolving mm. and dynamic. My approach to these issues, if I assume office, will be different. I will deploy a different approach to ensure that we get uh, across this hurdle. But what you say um, is the reason that I am persisting in this project of driving my speakership ambition. Because if I chicken out, for instance, how are you sure that in the 11th assembly you would even have one woman? Mm. That's a good point. This would demoralize more women and their participation in <coughs> politics. Have you ever thought what would happen if the women took a bet amongst themselves? No woman, no voting. If you promise 35% affirmative action, the time to prove it to Nigeria is now. I think Anything that's, uh, less that's fair enough would really rub off on the integrity of the party and the person we all respect. I will continue to adhere to the party and my loyalty and love for the president-elect. But I assure you, voting would not be done by only the majority party. Hmm, There's a lot of true. alliances because Nigerians want the best and only the best will give the best to Absolutely. Nigerians. And even the minority would prefer a Miriam Onoha, who is credible, competent, and capable to bring new ideas. And of course, having more women, I mean, in agreeing with the point you're making, having more women in leadership positions strengthens the sense of connection mm -hmm with the government that female voters have. And as you said, there is a huge chunk of the Nigerian population that is female, and it bolsters the sense that government cares about their concerns. And it also inspires more women to become more politically engaged, which in the final analysis is a positive thing for whichever party is in power. Well, um, that is a very good... Um postulation and assertion. But for me, I, at this point, <clears throat> I really would don't dwell on rhetorics. I like us to put to practice what we've always preached. You cannot say you love your children equally, yet you discriminate against mm. the girl child. I was a girl, now I'm a woman. I was being told that we are the leaders of tomorrow. This is the tomorrow. And I'm taking my destiny in my own hands. I've always fought my battles and I've always won. I've swum against the current. Those who know me will tell you that I am determined. I am in it to win. It must be a real big challenge being in politics in Nigeria. Well, because I know that the system is one which will not settle for mediocrity at this time. We need my character of person in the house to bring a fresh of a breath of fresh air to a society or to a family that is begging for harmony we need to improve efficiency 
in the way of doing house businesses. So, so what is the best way to promote more equal and inclusive representation of women in the National Assembly? And should that include, for instance, you being elected Speaker of the House? Uh, you just answered the question. How else but to start now? We've been told these stories. It's now like nursery rhyme. Yeah, but I'm wondering if, do if you don't get the speakership, what are the alternative ways of promoting more equal and inclusive representation of women in the National Assembly? I mean, you may end up not being the speaker or the deputy speaker. Well, um, it will still boil down to uh, the president-elect when it's one into action to be more original with the national gender policy. I'm not saying it must be me. It must be me. Mm. But the point I'm making is that let it be on record that this woman fought through the storm, passed through the hurdles, scored the right points to gain admission into an, a university, and is facing a challenge for no reason. So you can see that it doesn't add up. My worry is that we have constantly been talking about improving girl-child enrollment with the concerns of out-of-school uh, issues and all of that. Mm. Growing up, I had a lot of respect uh, for the future of the country. I hoped that a time would come when women will be treated like their male counterparts were treated. And that mentality is still with me, and that's what has brought me thus far. So my being here is an inspiration to a lot of other women who have long desired for the opportunity to just bring their experiences to bear. I mean, if, we're not, if we've not been getting some things right in the past, why not do it differently? Right. Okay. Women bring new perspective and different perspectives to well, politics and governance. We I, add human face to everything. We breathe you, life. And you can imagine what it will mean. It will change the narratives and present us to be like a competing with our uh, 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 sure. with others well, among the Committee of Nations. I, I want to wish you all the very best. I think that um, even I have been inspired by your words here. Thank you very much indeed. Princess Miriam Onoha is a member of the House of Representatives who aspires to be the Speaker of the 10th National Assembly.